Good morning, everyone. Hi, and welcome to, um, to San Diego. Um, I've got the privilege of doing the, uh, the welcome segment of our session. My name is Julio Tapia. I'm part of the uh, Cloud Platforms business unit here at Red Hat. And I manage uh, a couple of different functions, the partner ecosystem and the community efforts of which OpenShift Commons is a part of. So delighted to be here today. Um, this marks the seventh OpenShift uh, gathering of the year. Uh, we have had them in Barcelona, in Milan, in London, uh, Buenos Aires, uh, also San Francisco, Santa Clara, and now San Diego. So we're really excited to have these events. And we couldn't do it without the support of our community. So thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and kick things off and invite Diane Mueller, our Master of Ceremonies. And Diane, please come on up here. Thank you. All right, Diane, welcome, and have a great day, everybody. We look forward to working with you. Yep, thank you. All right, so first I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you very much to all of our sponsors. This is a community event. It doesn't happen um, without them, and so when you're on the breaks and you're going anywhere for a coffee, bio break, walking off the bo boat for some sunshine, make sure you say hi and um, meet and greet with them. They really make this thing happen. Um, we've got an incredibly packed schedule and we're already 10 minutes late. So um, I'm gonna talk really fast for my little intro and so if you need any more details, just come find me during the breaks. But it is a very deep, long day. So um, the boat will never leave the, sta the, the dock. So if you are um, thinking we're going to take off and you're trapped here, that's not what's going to happen. You are here. I felt the boat move just a tiny little bit this morning. I'm not sure whether that was tide adjustment or nothing, but it, it should be pretty stable all day. Um, we've got a lot going on. I'm going to kick off into um, my usual opening talk here, um, which I call the search for connections across the OpenShift ecosystem. And this is, um, we do, like, like Julio has said, we do this many times during the year, and it shape shifts a little bit for each, um, each audience. Uh, we just did a wonderful one on artificial intelligence and machine learning, and all of that content was recorded and uploaded to YouTube, and all of this content will be uploaded and in YouTube, hopefully in, in two days or so. And as well, it's all streaming live on Facebook, so if you're out there in Facebook land, hi, Mom. Um, well, we'll, you can join us in and ask questions. We probably won't be monitoring it, but we do have one person who um, we'll, can try and answer any of your questions. Ryan Jarvanen is our, our host on ha Facebook today. So today is really, um, and I say this every time, and this is not like a stocky thing, is all about facial recognition. And this is facial recognition before AI. This is the human connections that you need to make in order to do your day-to-day -day jobs to work on it within the community, in your organization. And today, what I'm really going to ask you all to do is make sure whomever you're sitting next to, introduce yourself to them, say hello. Um, if you already know that person, move or turn to the other side. Today is really, you're going to go into uh, KubeCon, and there are 12,000 people showing up this week. And this is a smaller event. We had 600 people register. Um, they'll be coming in and out all day long. We have stuff happening all the way up until 8 o'clock. We have a wonderful evening reception on the roof deck. So it'll be a lot of opportunities to meet new people. And that really is um, the key to our community. And OpenShift Commons is the OpenShift ecosystem community. Um, and that's really what this day and these days um, are all about. The whole community model is based on having um, all the code in the open source, all of our community efforts are in the open, and we are collaborating in the open. You can see issues, all kinds of wonderful things on GitHub, whether it's in the Kubernetes repos, the OKD repos, or any of the ancillary projects. Everything is out in the open, and this is why it's so key to make sure that we're all connected and we're all playing well with each other. Um, because if you've ever been to a Red Hat event, you see or you hear someone say, um, open source is in our DNA. And they show this wonderful double helix diagram. And we talk about the million plus projects that are out there that we're involved in. And I think this is kind of old. It's 2018. Um, there are many more repositories in GitHub. So it's really important that we recognize that the, although OKD 
is a, a, a single repo or multiple repos under the OpenShift um, repo in um, GitHub, that it's very much interrelated with a lot of upstream and downstream um, projects. Um, when I like to say that OKD is a function of Kubernetes plus plus plus, whether it's Prometheus or Jaeger or operators or anything else like that. So we are not standing here alone, though I'm standing here alone with all of you. But um, the way that I like to think about this is that a healthy community is a community with really strong connectivity to other communities. So um, the health of an open source community is really um, most accurately measured by the connections with members to other upstream and downstream project communities within its ecosystem, and probably within other ecosystems as well. So, and the jellyfish metaphor is kind of near and dear to my heart. Um, I have some wonderful tools that I use to manage all of the communities that come within the open source ecosystem that is that. And if you look at these diagrams that are up here right now, every one of those dots represents a person. Um, and the very center of those dots is a little blue dot that is the repo. Um, and if I did this live over the Wi-Fi, it probably would take forever. So I've got some screenshots here. But this is really about how the connections are made between projects. And if you look really closely, you can see these people who are the connector people. Um, and those are really important people because those are the people that help, help the knowledge travel back and forth between projects. And we want to nurture those people. And we want, those are also the people that I like to get up on stage um, and recognize um, as people who can help us bridge between release processes, um, feedback that we have, some, something we need, features we need in. So this is really today and every day um, outside of this day is about creating more connections and nurturing them. And that's really what OpenShift Commons is about. It's a slightly different tilt on OpenShift Commons, OpenShift community models. We're not about trying to get people to contribute code just to our project um, or a my code base, because if you look at it um, right now, almost, not all, but a large majority of the work that goes on inside of Red Hat around OpenShift is really a contribution to Kubernetes or one of the CNCF projects. So um, our goal is really just to promote all the peer-to-peer -peer interactions, whether it's through gatherings like this or briefings. We have a really fun um, YouTube channel where I get to get people to tell me everything and teach me everything about new technology or new releases. It's like having your own private tutor. And that's all up on um, YouTube. There's a lot of working groups and SIGs. You'll hear from some of the leaders of those today. Um, and we have an active um, Slack channel. And if you're not on the Slack channel, um, join Commons. We'll get your email. We'll add you today. Because um, this is a scary thing. Um, and it's, if it's not scary to you, it's scary to me because I have to really have a relationship with most of these wonderful people that are running these projects in the CNCF. Um, and it's a really hard thing to navigate. Um, and if that scares you, my jellyfish metaphor will scare you even more. There's about 2,000 named jellyfish in the world. And I love them because the tentacles represent to me the connections between people. And not all jellyfish sting. Though you do have to be good and um, realize how things work. But um, there are over 300,000, they say, um, species that have um, not yet been discovered. And if you think about what GitHub is, there are probably at least that many projects out there that we haven't touched on that will in some day grow into something that we should know about. So today, we'll hear about a few of them. But I'm sure this week at KubeCon, we're going to hear a lot more. So this jellyfish metaphor, bear with me, is very important to the health of any community. And you being here today are helping us grow this network of connections. So um, I also want to give a shout out to um, our IBM and IBM Cloud for, again, um, they are our headline sponsors today. And um, we're really grateful for them stepping up and contributing um, their funds. So they're upstairs. But it's also uh, the tools that I, I get to use. We start to see some of the overlaying of where there are people who are working on projects with us from IBM as we've now been acquired. So we get to learn where our compatriots are doing. So it's been a really interesting thing. And there are some where we haven't been working in at all. So these are the kind of things that um, today we'll probably try and draw out. There are other um, companies have different personas. And 
we, we try and draw them out. And Amadeus is a good example. They've been with OpenShift and doing great things. And um, they'll be giving briefings on a regular cadence about cool stuff they're doing. They did a talk on their use of Kafka. And, um, but they work on lots of things, not just OpenShift. And so really, this today is not just about OpenShift. It's about everything you do with OpenShift, the downstream project, the upstream projects that you're working on, the workloads that you're um, deploying on there. Um, we kind of are probably going to focus today mostly on the graduated, and I probably should have updated this, but probably those are not all the graduation announcements at KubeCon have been made yet, so there's a few more that have graduated. But the core things here are not all of them, so we'll try and make it easy today. We're also going to talk today about um, the operator framework. You'll see right after lunch, we have a, a talk from Rob Sumsky, who's going to walk you through the operator framework. And we have some wonderful people here today who are going to be in a panel this afternoon talking about having built operators, the lessons that they've learned, and um, the operator maturity model, and all the goodness from the operator lifecycle management. So there's a lot of content. Operator Hub, um, if you haven't been there, has a ton of um, supported and maintained operators now, um, and th these get pushed into um, Operator Hub within OpenShift itself. <clears throat> I'm not going to steal any of the thunder from Rob, but it's, it's a really important pattern that's coming up now um, within the entire Kubernetes ecosystem. And so we launched Operator Hub with AWS and Microsoft and Google, and what the goal is is really to help people discover and be able to install additional services and applications, um, whether they're upstream or downstream, and um, work with our partners to make sure that they support and maintain them, not just um, things that we have to do at Red Hat. So there's a really kind of vibrant community that's coming up around that. Um, but it's not all about the technology. You know, sometimes it feels like. Um, we say technology will solve all problems, but it's really, we have to look at a lot of other things too. And so there's a lot of common um, challenges that we hear at the common um, gatherings. You're gonna hear from ING, the Weather Channel, Omnitrax, um, Broadcom, and I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody because I'm just going too fast. Oh, ExxonMobil, Audrey's coming. She's a wonderful speaker. Um, and they're going to talk about what they're doing inside of their organizations. So they're going to share what's in their, their stack that they're running with OpenShift on, but also some of the um, what's in their workloads and their stories of how they've come to embrace this new um, transformative world that we live in. There, I avoided saying digital transformation, didn't I? Yes. Did. I did. Damn. And then I said it afterwards. Um, we're going to talk a lot about day two. Um, we spend a lot of time getting stuff installed, um, and then it's up there, and then we have to patch it. We have to um, do some lifecycle management. So there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes to make that easy and seamless. So that's, you're going to hear a lot about that um, today. And for us, now that um, we've, kind of, we've got a mature and stable OpenShift 4 out there in the universe, it's really about focusing, I think, now on making sure we optimize our platform and Kubernetes itself to enable the workloads um, and enable developers and to really get that um, return on investment that you all um, expect. And um, that's been you know, really the crux of how we've built out um, OpenShift 4. So we got a long talk this afternoon um, with some of the, the leads from the OpenShift um, engineering team and some great demos. Um, it's been a, an evolution. If you've been with us since the beginning, I'm sorry. We've done a lot um, since seven years ago when we started. And we were on a MongoDB, Ruby on Rails, platform as a service. We've come a long way, baby. and. Um, we're really happy to see this new evolution, the operator-based installs, and all the cool stuff. And we're going to hear a lot about that today. Um, we also have um, some new folks aboard uh, the good ship Red Hat. And um, we're going to bring them up for a talk uh, today, um, which should be quite interesting. If you know these uh, characters and people, they've been pretty well known um, throughout the industry um, for some of the books that they've written and some of the um, comments and uh, opinions they've held, I should say. And um, I'm really looking forward to um, the collaboration between this new office, um, the Global Transformation Office, and um, the work that our 
have been ongoing for the past few years around the Open Innovation Labs. Um, if you haven't seen or heard about Open Innovation Labs, you just didn't realize it because a number of them have been some of the customer case studies that we've done, like Easier AG and others um, that have gone through the Innovation Labs and have done some amazing things, learning the Agile and learning how to be DevOpsy and all that good stuff. So um, there's, there's going to be a lot of fun today, I think, in this next conversation we have. So I'm um, trying to keep up with the time, and I think I'm close to not to run us over. Today really is, I, I'll just keep repeating, it's a very jellyfish day. I really want you to connect with each other. Um, you'll see a lot of great stuff happening on stage. Some really interesting demos are gonna uh, occur as long as the Wi-Fi holds out. And um, we really, don't just be a spectator. Come in, um, grab somebody on the coffee breaks, ask them questions. The very end of our day, what I'm going to do, and they, the guys and the gals on my teams love me for this, I make all of the Red Hatters who have spoken during the day and a few others who happen to be here come up on stage and we do an AMA session. And we'll have runners with microphones and you can ask them anything. Remember that, anything. So um, please, um, that, and that's the way we get to pack the schedule too. So we'll move pretty quickly between things and then we'll just save up your questions for the end or during the breaks. So again, um, OpenShift Commons uh, is uh, the organization. It's a member-based organization. You only need to join once for your entire organization, so you may already be in. Um, there is a table upstairs, and my European counterpart from who's here, um, Tanya Repo down in the front, um, will be uh, staffing the table upstairs and can get you signed up and can look up and see if, you've, um, if your organization's already joined. We'll just add you to Slack and to the mailing list. Um, and if you haven't, we'll help you fill out the form, which is really not that hard, um, and make sure you get um, added into it now. There are about 530 organizations already in the Slack and in the channel, so it's pretty active. Um, and it's really the place where we like to, I like to say that Red Hat kind of gets out of the way and lets you talk to each other amongst yourselves. And it's not a technical support line, though there is a little bit of chatter like that that happens in there. Um, mostly it's about connecting the dots, connecting with each other, and giving you a way to find each other. Um, the other key to the, to the OpenShift Commons is there's no anonymity. We ask you to join using your corporate email address or your um, something other than an anonymous one so people know who you are. And that has really helped us a lot um, to build trust so people know where you're coming from. Um, and what, you're, what baggage you're bringing with you. But it's also um, been a really great way for people to connect. And so I'm um, going to really hope that the, those of you who haven't joined OpenShift Commons will do so today. It's free. There's no charge. There's no CLA. There's no nothing. It's just sign up and we'll get you in there. So again, I just want to really thank my um, sponsors. Uh, we really couldn't do it without you guys. Diamondati is um, sponsoring the drinks on the deck from 6 to 8. Um, I'm told at 8 o'clock the captain's going to come out and kick us off right away because they have to move from this dock. So um, just be aware that right at 8, we're gonna, they're going to make a little noise and you got 15 minutes to get off. So, um, But the other folks that are up there have been, many of them have been supporters of um, the Commons and other events uh, uh, for the past couple of years, and we really appreciate it. So thank you very much.